Great news, TYT is partnering with participant media to help solve the climate crisis, but we need your guys help. Make sure you check out our series, 10 Days of Action, to learn more about what you can do to make a difference. And also go see an inconvenient sequel, Truth to Power. It's in theaters nationwide right now. It has a really important message, and I want all of you guys to learn that and absorb it. It's very important. And look, if President Trump isn't gonna lead, then we should. And I believe in the American people, and I think we can do it. Already, the majority of Americans are on our side. And so are civic leaders, mayors, governors, and businesses. And they're all moving forward to stop climate change. So don't worry, guys. No single person can stop us. If we fight together, we can win. So I pledge to join the movement and hashtag be inconvenient. Go to inconveniencesequel.com slash action to be part of the solution. A new viral video online shows a cop pointing a gun at a couple after a routine uh, traffic stop. The couple was apparently speeding and then they were questioning why it is that the police officer was holding a gun to them um, after he had requested uh, registration. So this stop took place on July 26 after an officer uh, noticed a car pass him going 85 miles per hour and that's according to the Campbell Police Department in California. After stopping the car for speeding, the officer requested the driver's license and additional paperwork. The driver and passenger spent several minutes looking for the paperwork before the officer walked back to his motorcycle to write a citation. Now, so far, both parties are in agreement over what happened, but then all of a sudden there's massive disagreement, especially when it comes to the fact that the officer pulled a gun on the the people in the car. Now, we're gonna show you the video that went viral. It's not the full nine minute video, but it'll give you a sense of what the scene was like and and how scary it was, to be honest with you. Take a quick look. Looking for the I understand that, don't move, all right? Oh my God. I understand that, don't move. Why are you still pointing the gun at me, bro? Do not move right now, bud. Why are you still pointing the gun at me, though? Do not move right now. Record this Why are you still pointing the gun at me, bro? My hands are right here. I understand that. No, you don't understand, because you still got the gun pointing at me, bro. Relax. No, I'm not going to relax. Get the gun off me. serious right now. Is that really necessary? It is right now, okay? His hands are both out. It's tight for me. <laughs> serious right now, bro. We'll be okay. Just You're listen. telling no, me no, 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 okay. you have a Get gun off me. Get your gun off me, bro. Get my backup to be here and we'll do Back up for what? And you just keep pointing at me, bro. Yeah, my gun's out of my holster and it's pointed at you right now. Why? Why is it? I don't appreciate you sticking your hands under You asked for us for fing red. You can see bro. whatever's on my floor. There's nothing on my floor that he reached for. Do you not want the fing paperwork? Hey, okay? I'm done talking to you at this point. Just Why? My Why? Keep your hands out and don't reach for anything, okay? I'm not reaching for nothing. for speed. The pastor was reaching for something under the seat. Yeah, registration. You asked for registration. Okay, so nine minutes he pointed the gun at him. Uh, mm-hmm. You know what that reminded me of? Immediately, I thought of Philando Castile. I know, and and luckily in this case, uh, he wasn't black. Well, no one got killed uh, in, in this situation. Yeah. Um, so look, there's a lot of factors. Okay, uh, and uh, yes, one of them could be race, but let's let's talk about the the more the bigger factor. Okay, the bigger factor is. As we've told you a million times, cops are told anything, anything's a danger, everybody's got a gun. Well, that part is true. So by the way, we should think about that, right? And you wonder why cops are so nervous, because there's over 250 million guns in the country. Okay, and they're taught, okay, if they reach anywhere, but their registration's in the glove compartment, or maybe it fell next to their seat. I remember when I was growing up in America and you could reach to get your registration and you wouldn't have a gun pulled on you. Now it's gotten worse. Oh, pull the gun, pull the gun, pull the gun. And look, if I have a cop pull a gun on me, do you have any idea how nervous I am? Oh and it, you should be enormously nervous. It doesn't matter what you look like. Because if they think you're even twitching in the wrong direction, that's it, you're dead. And you say, oh, and in one in, in part of this story in the Washington Post, they're like, even if like the, I, the guy was understandably nervous, even though it was a police officer. Even though, okay. I mean, are you have you not watched the news at all? And like again, it's the training. So I'm more nervous with a cop because a random person, even if they're a criminal, was not told 
that at any minute someone can shoot you and you should never ever take a risk and you should just put someone down immediately. Whereas we train our cops to do that. So that's why, oh, you reach for something inside. How could you not reach for something inside a car? How do you get your registration without reaching? Like you can't put your hands up, you can't put them down. And you think we shouldn't be nervous that the cops are gonna shoot us? <coughs> that guy was understandably angry and very worried. He should have been very worried. Okay, so what I found interesting was uh, the police department's reaction to this video. They claimed that uh, the situation ended in an amicable manner. And they say, we understand that it's never a comfortable position to have a gun pointed at you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> regardless of whether it's a police officer. Unfortunately, the length of time that the officer's gun was drawn lasted much longer than normal based on his location. But they claimed, all right, after that happened though, um, they, they had a talk. And uh, the the man in the video who was upset at the gun pointed at him even apologized to cops. But it seems like that uh, perspective wa wasn't accurate because that video was posted online by the man in the video who had the gun pointed at him. And um, he didn't have nice things to say about the cops, which means that it didn't end amicably. Um, but the reaction to the video is what uh, I, I think should be concerning as well because while people defended uh, you know, the man who was understandably upset, there were also individuals who were like, well, he shouldn't have been talking to the cop that way. Look, oh. you guys have to understand when cops are justified in pulling their weapons and shooting their weapons. It's when an individual is an imminent threat, when their lives are in danger, you can curse at a police officer. Guess what? That's actually protected by our first amendment, okay? That is a person who's paid by taxpayer money. He is a public official. And so you are allowed to say negative things to cops. They're not allowed to shoot you or pull out their gun as a result of you saying things that are critical of them or, you know, that that you might not like. It's the justifications. That's what that's what gets to me. Really? You think it's okay for a gun, a, a, a cop to pull out a gun or potentially shoot someone because they said something negative to the cop? So it used to be that a cop would pull out a gun and say, stop, you're under arrest, freeze, all that stuff. And would only fire if his, he was, his life was in real danger. Then it became, if you're in danger of getting hurt, you know, then, then you could pull your gun or shoot your gun. Now it's gotten to the point, if your feelings are in danger of getting hurt, then you can pull the gun, right? So now look, I know what they'll say, they'll say, no, he was reaching down. Again, I don't know where you can reach inside a car where a cop wouldn't pull a gun on you, right? right? So, and, and, and part of the reason that they train that way is, if they talk back to you, then it's gonna lead to chaos. And you gotta show them who's boss, and you gotta establish order right away. Yeah, sometimes that makes sense. If you've got a situation that's actually out of hand, and it is headed down the wrong direction, I. I'm not saying cops have to be pleasant to everyone. Of course, there's a situation where you yell at them, where you arrest them, where you have to take physical action. And yes, there are situations where you have to pull a gun, but they should be extreme. They shouldn't be regular course of, oh, well, he said something I didn't like. Talking back to a cop is not an offense you should get executed for. And once he pulls that gun, if anything goes wrong, you die. If he perceives your hands to be going too far low or too far high, you die, and you got people out there going, well, you shouldn't have talked back to the cop. Are you insane? That's now a death penalty offense in America?